If there was a place where time stood still, it would be here. This is the village of Old Fangak, southern Sudan. The people of the region are like the earth under their feet. And they are hardened not only by their environment. Decades of civil war have left these people with little. Even hope is a scarce commodity. Somewhere between three and 5,000 people live in Old Fangak. For a thousand years or longer, this has been the home of the New Air people along the banks of this tributary of the Nile River. Just about every village in this region looks like this. They live in two coals, mud homes with thatched roofs. Life is basic. Very basic. This is the heart of Africa. And it's the place where an Alaskan doctor, Jill Seaman, has given her heart. Mama? It is 39 steps from her too cold to the clinic. Steps taken countless times and always leading to someone who needs help. So many who need help. The people of this region often live with extreme malnutrition. Without even the basic medical care, they suffer from every disease imaginable. Tuberculosis, malaria, polio, even the plague. A disease as simple as measles is a killer. One out of five children will likely die because they were not vaccinated. And that's just the children. There is no time to be weary. So much work for one doctor. Father Wellington Alves is a missionary with the Camboni Order. He has lived and worked in Old Fangak since 2003. She is very committed. She works with the heart. She loves the people. And the people also love her and appreciate very much her presence here among them. Also because she remained here during the war also. The current medical clinic and Old Fangak is a decades-old building built when Sudan was a British colony. Ten beds for inpatients. Often when the beds are full, patients stay outside on the ground and they might have walked for days to get here. On the other side of the planet, in a small conference room, a group of Alaskans pour over a map of Sudan trying to find old Fangak, unsuccessfully at first. This group doesn't have a name yet, but they have a purpose, building a permanent medical clinic for Jill and the people of Old Fandak. In November 2007, Anchorage doctor Jack Hickel and nurse Laurie Gibbons visited Jill in Old Fandak. What they found was a humanitarian crisis that broke their hearts. The home video of this visit shared with friends, family, and co-workers was all it took to set in motion this big idea. It's now called the Alaska-Sudan Medical Project. Over the next year, word spread and the fundraising began. We appreciate what you're doing for Back in Alaska for the summer, Jill attended a fundraising event in Anchorage. She was greeted like a celebrity, not by Alaskans. Most have never heard of her, but by the Sudanese, who consider her one of their own and will not pass up this opportunity to say thank you 
in person. If Jill Seaman could avoid this public attention, she would. In 1997, Time magazine named her a hero of medicine. In 2009, the MacArthur Foundation chose Jill as a MacArthur Fellow, but she's not the type to draw attention to herself. This is our um, we're, of course, and in a public setting like this, there. Jill so is only right comfortable when she's but talking about the people the of Sudan, people she has there, lived with and helped from, for two decades. Over the months, more Alaskans joined the effort. More Southern Sudanese, who now call Anchorage home, help raise the awareness. Even on a cold winter's day at a busy Anchorage intersection. This is not the kind of temperature these Sudanese are used to, but the purpose is enough fire to keep them warm. Behind the scenes, volunteers made a fact-finding trip to Ofangak. The new clinic was designed, and as funds became available, the building was prefabricated and the materials purchased in Nairobi, Kenya. From Nairobi, the materials were trucked to Juba in southern Sudan, and from here loaded onto a barge for the journey to Ofangak. Word spread in the village. The clinic was on its way. It had taken 18 months, but when the team of Alaskans looked outside the window as the Cessna caravan banked to land, the barge had just arrived. In fact, the largest barge to ever arrive in recent memory, everything intact. At the airstrip, father and son embrace. Justin Hickel, a college student, has spent the last two months in Ofangak, along with Patrick Schoenecker, preparing the way for this first construction team. It's a short boat ride from the airstrip to the village, the final leg from Alaska to Old Fangak. Oh, nice to meet you. Oh, my goodness. Welcome to Old Fangak. With so many oh new goodness. faces in the I village, hope, um, uh, Jill breaks that, away from her work to say hello, to, to okay but not for long. <laughs> Just after sunset, the evening clinic opens, and as always, there will be dozens waiting for help. Tonight, however, she will have help. While fire is set to prepare the land for planting rage across the river, the Alaskan medical team gets to work. Without electricity, they work using headlamps until everyone is seen.